Hey folks, so what I'm doing here is, you can see I've got the area nicely lit up, eh? A couple of these lights. Uh, what I'm trying to do is loosen up this bolt and that bolt, the two shock bolts. Um, I tried using this big behemoth. They didn't feel like they were coming and they felt like something was going to snap, so I didn't keep going. I'm not changing the shock, so I don't want to snap the bolt. I'm worried about it. If I was just replacing the shock, it wouldn't matter. I'd just refund it till they broke or came off and then replace it. I'm not. The reason I want to take them off is I'm building something that bolts down to the shock tower, has a brace that goes up against this, your your brake cylinder. Um, it'll, it'll um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a bit of flex in the firewall on Miatas. When you stomp on the brake real hard, this flex is like, I don't know, a quarter inch or something. It's not a lot, but it's enough that you can feel it. If you stiffen it up, you put a brace going from there to there to hold it. You can feel it in the braking. It's just more positive, firmer braking is always better. So anyway, I tried reefing on both of these. This one I soaked overnight in PB Blaster. Yeah. Here be the PB Blaster I was using. PB Blaster breaks loose faster, powerful rust penetrating catalyst. Danger, poison, contents under pressure. Don't drink it. Anyway, I had no intention of drinking it, but I sprayed it on this one. I don't know why I didn't spray it on that one. Maybe I was just trying it out and it didn't make a hell of a difference. These are really rusty. Like I doubt these have ever been taken off in the last, I don't know, it's a 92. So figure it out. Uh, they might've been changed at some point, but it wasn't recently. So I'm going to try and take these out. Now what I'm going to do, I made a video about this thing when I got it. And I will. <clears throat> and and I, I don't think I ever did a demo of it or tried it out in a real world situation. You can see I've used it a few times. There's some, some burns on the coils from not being too careful. It doesn't hurt them and you can replace these. They're, they're not too terribly expensive. But I have been using it a fair amount. And it's, it's worked every time I've used it. It's, it's solved my problem. So what I'm going to do is use that. It's an induction heater to heat up these bolts. We're going to try this one first, along with the PB Blaster, and see how it comes loose, if it comes loose. And then we'll give that one down there a try. So I'm going to stop the video here. I'll set you guys up on a tripod, and we'll, we'll, it's go time. All right, so just a sec. All right, everybody, we're over here at my workbench. And this is what I'll be using to try and bust those those nuts loose. And it's a Sol Solari. Uh, what is it? 110 volt, 50 to 60 hertz, 10 amp induction heater. Uh, high frequency induction heater. It works incredible. Um, do not touch attachment immediately after use. Allow ample cooling time. Wear safety glasses and gloves when working with tools. Do not use in volatile environment or on any flammable or pressurized containers. That's really good advice. Stay away from it if you have a pacemaker. Don't touch it. It's hot. Magnetic. Do not wear any metal objects, i.e. rings, watches, body piercings, metallic, surgical implants, etc. Harbor, high frequency, harbor freight. I'm so used to saying harbor freight when I see HF. And I live in Canada. We don't even have harbor freights here. That's how much people talk about harbor freight online. It's ridiculous. High frequency magnetic fields heat metal objects instantly and may cause severe burns. I'm going to do some Googling when I'm done with making this video. See if anybody's actually been burned by, you know, like a metal knee or something or a titanium hip and they were using this and they got hurt. I'm curious now. Um, I'm going to guess, just taking a guess, this is about the right size. It looks about the right size. I know it's a 14 millimeter nut. So this, see, they go in there. There's two knobs on the side to tighten it. They're currently loose. So we put that in till it bottoms out. Tighten the knobs one at a time. Or if you're fancy, look at this. Two at a time. Holy moly, eh? Told you guys I was talented. Take it. Plug it into an extension cord here. All right. Now this thing has a light on the end of it. So if you're, you know, working under a car or something that's a bit dark, you can and turn that on. You can see what you're, what you're heating. Okay, so I'm going to go set set this up over on the car, and we'll we'll get started and give it a try. Hold on. All right, folks, we're over here under the hood of my Miata. There's the, the shock tower, and so we're going to attempt to break that one loose, and there's another one on this side. Um, let's see. Well, let's just give it a try. Let's give it a go. You hold it over the nut, 
try not to directly touch anything, but it's not going to kill anything if you do, which is one of the reasons they have the, this fabric, a heat resistant fabric that coats the wire that goes through. So it doesn't ground out and touch anything. If you tear this or burn through this fabric, replace it. Don't keep using it. All right, let's give her a go. Make sure we don't burn that. Turn it on, hold it over. It'll usually start to smoke once it starts to get hot. You can make it glow cherry red hot, but you generally don't have to get it that hot. Once it starts really smoking, that's usually plenty good. Kind of, kind of feel it humming in your hand when you got it. Feel it vibrate. Come on. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's starting to smoke a little. I should have got showed you guys me trying it with the wrench before this because I did try and it was pretty stiff. It said I felt it might have come, but it also might have broken. It felt like it was it felt like it was gonna snap. You know that feeling when it right before it gets really loose when you're reefing on something and the, the bolt snaps? So yeah, now it's smoking. It smells like, oh God, look at that on your eye. Okay, let's take that off, set it on the ground, get our ratchet on there. Oh, turns the right way. Oh, geez, look at that. Like butter. No problem at all. You can see it's kind of, I'll leave it. And we're not going to take it off right off right this moment, but I'll leave it loose so you guys can see. Now let's try this one in here. I don't know if I can, you guys, you can't really see that. But let's give it a little try. This one I'm not sure about because I, again, the other one I sprayed with PB blaster and let it soak for, oh, I don't know, over 24 hours. This one's going to be a little tricky. What is that line? Let's move this out of the way. Um, hold on a sec. Let's set this down. How does that pop out of there? There we go. Let's just put that over there. You don't want to melt any wires or anything. So let's get this down in there before we even turn it on. Uh, maybe this one. Hold on a second, folks. straighten the wires a little bit so I can come at it straight from the top rather than at this angle. I don't want to touch this brake line or that brake line, you know. So let's go like this. That'll work. Make sure you're not touching any plastic or anything. Smell it. Just making sure it's not this diagnostic port that I'm smelling. It's not definitely a metal smell. Yeah, it smells like when you're welding or when you're grinding rusty, dirty metal. That's what it's like. She's smoking now. Not sure how this looks on camera, but there's a lot of smoke coming right up in my face. All right, set that down. Try to get on it fairly quickly before it cools down. Oh, again. Now those were really rusty, rusty nuts. Which nuts? These nuts. 
and they loosened right up with that. Like, all right, you guys. So I'll take you off the tripod here and let you have a look. Hold on, let me get that off of there. All right, there we go. Hold on, right, hold there on. There we go. So there's that one. You can see it's been loosened. There's gap underneath. I'm not going to touch it because it's hot. And the same with this one over there. See that? So this is the problem with, like, you can't get a torch in here. You're going to melt the rubber bushing. You're going to melt the plastic air box. You're going to burn these hoses, wiring looms, melt the, the alarm horn over here. I mean, you're, there's no way to get at that. Again, you got the rubber bushing in this, the shock, brake line right here, carbon fiber intake, diagnostic, plastic diagnostic port. There's just too much stuff to get a torch in and, and, and burn things, melt things. Maybe you can do it, I can't. And there's no need to fool around with it. This just works. It's safe, it's quick, it's easy. I highly recommend this tool to anyone that works on cars that lives in the rust belt. I mean, seriously, this thing is just, it's been a butt saver for me. I don't remember how much it was exactly. It was two to $300 Canadian, and that was about a year ago. So I'm gonna say probably three to 400 bucks now. Well worth it, well worth it. It works excellent. I, you know how much a pain in the ass would be if I broke those and had to replace the shock? Um, now you don't, less breaking of fasteners. So anyway, so there you go, folks. That's it, that's my handy dandy little hot rod, high frequency induction heater. Works fabulous. This one I got on Amazon. I'll actually, I'll point, I'll, I'll post a link to it on the, amazon.ca website and i'll see if i can find one on the amazon.com website um i think these are a lot of these are all made by the same manufacturer in china probably i don't know i'm just guessing a lot of them look the same they have the same grip the same buttons everything's the same they're very similar they're a very simple tool there's not a lot there's no complex electronics in them or anything it's not a big deal so yeah if you find a cheaper one Read the reviews. If it gets good reviews, buy it. Um, it's not really a case of this thing where, where you need to spend more money to get a great one, unless it's something you use absolutely every day, all day. Even then, I don't know if it would make a difference. So there you go. Thanks for watching. You got any questions or comments, leave them down below. I will be sure to answer them. Please like, please subscribe, please share, and, and most of all, please comment. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day. See ya.